Hey everyone, this is a clip from a recent episode of Another Pass, where we talk about movies and all the struggles that go into making them. If you like it, check out the whole podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts. I, I mentioned it before, but I want to go a little more in depth with the music. Um, I love the soundtrack for this playlist or for this uh, movie. And um, I'm going to give my hot take, which Case knows because we've talked about it in the past. That Thing You Do is a great song. Dance With Me Tonight's the best wonder song by a wide margin. Um, the one that Steve Zahn sings. Imagine that. Uh, so um, I love that song. <laughs> And I recommend everybody look. Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day did a cover of it. I highly recommend it. Um, and the other songs they do, uh, All My Only Dreams is obviously very slow and dreary, uh, but it's good. I, I, I like it. And then- the, It's a ballad. <laughs> it's, a, it's a ballad. It's too fast, man. Um, I love I love that. Like I love how Jimmy's never satisfied. That's a side note, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, I love that. Well, he's the artist. Yeah, exactly. He's the talent. He's and the then, talent. And I really like Little Wild One. Um, I wish there was a little more focus on that song as a mm-hmm. as another song of theirs. Um, but also one of the strengths to this is the songs that aren't theirs. Um, I absolutely adore the Diane Day song. Like, yeah. it's, it's such a good, like, that's more of like 50s, like, you know, balladeer, like, sweet love song. I love that song. Like, I that's probably my favorite song on the, on the entire soundtrack. Um, Mr. Downtown's fun, obviously. Yeah. Um, the man with the badge in the <laughs> night. <laughs> That's his name. Yeah, I love that so much. It's good. I really like the Chantrelines, the when you hold my hand, you hold my heart. You hold my heart. Yeah. Yeah. Classic. I love the bass player like doing the motions for <laughs> yeah. like, like backstage for it. <laughs> yes. I love it. And uh, just, and then like there's the one I really like is I think it's the transition of them at the fairs traveling around. It's that scene of them like running around on the big map. Yeah, um, it's like a surf rock medley like thing. Really liked that because uh, I love surf rock. I'm a surfer, so that really helps. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just I just think the soundtrack as a whole is just really solid. Also underrated, the credit song, which is also called that thing you do, but it's done more of a '90s like adult alternative style. I really like that song too. So mm-hmm. yeah, just great great soundtrack. And nominated for Golden Globe, maybe an Oscar. I want to say <laughs> so. Um, yeah, Academy Award and Golden Globe for Best Original Song is that thing you do. So, yeah. But I think you mentioned Jukebox Musical earlier, and that you just gave me shivers when you said that, because I was like, this movie would be so much worse if it was the exact same movie but a Jukebox mu- mu- Musical. Right. Yeah. So but, bad. like, how far is this really from Jersey Boys? Yeah. You know, like, it, like it, and, and there are good things and bad things. You know, like, I would argue that Jimmy is, as a character in this is a Bob Gaudio type figure in a certain regard because he goes off and eventually becomes a music producer not satisfied with the work that he was doing as part of the band you know i but they they're free to for one thing they're free to have a villain uh even if even if they don't go very hard on jimmy being the villain of this whole piece but but he is and there's like some good character work stuff that goes on throughout it to sort of set up like no 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 this relationship is fucking toxic (laughs) actually i think jimmy gets the best like postscript of anybody it's my favorite because I love the fact that he not only got another band, he named it what he wanted to name this band in the first place, which is the Herdsman. And then he went back to play tone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I love that. Like, I love this. I quit. Ha ha. I'm walking out of here. And I love that he went back. to. I, I want to see that scene. I want to see where he goes back to play tone and Mr. White's there being like, welcome back, Jimmy. You know, and like, I want to see that so bad. Like, that's intriguing to me. So. Yeah, I, that that was a really satisfying postscript, I think. Yeah, I, and like you know, they didn't need to go too hard on what happened to them afterwards, but it was it is kind of I think a trend of like sixties, like or rather any like period piece thing to be like, okay, what happened to them? Because you know now is now is now like what what occurred for these characters in, in the intervening years, and I think yeah. Jimmy is the most interesting one because like Lenny's is like. Oh yeah, well now he owns a hotel in Nevada. He's currently single, and that's a fun joke yeah. because like yeah. he's the he's the Joker of the whole group. And like, uh, yeah, all right. So, 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 Guy and Faye like have a music conservatory, and they're probably doing just fine. Um, you know, it's, it's interesting. I like. I, I was watching the special features um, for the movie, and they were talking a lot about how Guy starts the movie in a pretty good spot. Like, he's actually like he's got you know, like while he might bristle under working for his dad, like he has a job. He has he clearly makes more money than most of the people around him. Like, he's well enough off that he can buy lunch or b- rather buy breakfast. 
for the table when mm-hmm. he dings Faye's car at the beginning of the, mm-hmm. of the movie. Um, so he's financially in a good spot. He has a good setup to like play his drums and like do a thing, but it's a, a private thing and he isn't getting it, it there. But, you know, he's well respected. He's got a like a, a beautiful girlfriend who like <laughs> kind of might be into him because he's his dad owns this like a successful store in town. Um, but, you know, whatever, like <laughs> like uh, objectively, he's in a good spot. A, a, a good position at the start uh, of the movie, but it's not enough for him. And he and never, but he never actually like goes too far. Like he's always, he's, he lands in a pretty good spot. Like he's at every point, like he never overextends himself. Uh, and that's kind of just an interesting detail when he is like clearly the character who Tom Hanks is supposed to be. <laughs> Remember, if you like that clip, check out the podcast. You can find it at certainpov.com or wherever you get your podcasts.